I think we've got one more that we wanted to talk about pretty quick. This one is brand spanking new, so we may not have a ton on it, but that the uh, the Black Lotus UEFI, and I called it a root kit the other day, but boot kit, much uh, d- definite distinction there. Yeah, so kind of coming back to ways that you could be compromised again. Um, boot kits, and, you know, typically these are used by more motivated adversaries, shall we say. Um, often you need physical access to a device to get it in there, or you at least need some way to have a user run a piece of malicious code. Um, they're not usually delivered through you know, websites other than maybe downloading the executable. Um, but it, this prompts an interesting question. How much do you think that a UEFI bootkit would sell for? I know Boy. the answer, so I can't guess. <laughs> that would be unfair. <laughs> I have no that idea. is true. We it's probably all know the answer if we read the article. Um, <laughs> yeah, you see, now in my head, buying buying a well written boot kit would would be an expensive deal. That, like I say, they're they're usually used by by advanced persistent threat actors um, or nation states. Only it turns out that for as little as five thousand uh, dollars plus two hundred dollars a year for each future upgrade. You can buy yourself a UEFI bootkit called Black Lotus, which, to put that into perspective, um, I looked this up earlier, an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, right, which, Aubrey, you're going to be familiar with, with uh, Adobe Premiere, is oh, yeah. about $600 a year. So for a little under 10 times the cost of an Adobe subscription, you get a bootkit that you can use to gain yourself a persistent foothold on someone's x86 laptop um it claims you know a whole bunch of features like being able to bypass secure boot um it's got anti-virtualization anti-debugging uh can bypass uac and windows and windows defender and code signing which would let you load you know arbitrary device drivers that aren't signed bypass all of the microsoft restrictions on that um and it, it works worldwide, although I thought the most interesting comment I saw about that was it works worldwide, except for in the Commonwealth of Independent States. I'll let people draw their own conclusions for that. Not surprising. Um, yeah. And and it's a lot smaller than Adobe Creative Cloud because it's just 80 kilobytes. And <laughs> I don't know how big Adobe Creative Cloud is these days, but it's going to be a lot bigger than 80K. 80 gigabytes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would not surprise me. Um, I think this makes it considerably more expensive than your average botnet for hire. Prices of those seem to have fallen to, you know, pennies on the dollar in the last few years. But with a botnet, what can you do? You can launch a denial of service. You can annoy someone, frustrate them, temporarily deny them of their income. But but what can you do with a persistent foothold into an organization, Right. You can be there silently watching, planning to exfiltrate company secrets or, you know, launch a ransomware attack and actually extort the company out of a large sum of money. Yeah, and to to your point, Aaron, you know, $5,000 sounds like a lot, especially when you compare it to botnets and some other ransomware strains you can buy. But when it's when you get that persistent foothold and you can go and deploy ransomware or steal intellectual property, which could net the attackers millions, if not more, uh, yeah. clearly it's a really small outlay. Um, but to me, it just really reinforces that trend we've been seeing for a number of years now of attacks you know, tools being becoming a service. You know, you no longer need to be an APT. You no longer to ha- need to have specific skills in creating malware or deploying a phishing campaign or even getting a boot or rootkit, as, as it turns out. You know, it's literally the case of having a maybe a spare credit card, probably a stolen credit card, to buy it, and then you get that persistent foothold. Um, and the capabilities, if true, as far as I know, it's not been spotted in the wild, um, but it's kind of been claimed and advertised. But if its capabilities are true, as to what Aaron said, you know, things like bypassing secure boot and so on, it's, uh, it's, it, it's difficult to understate, sorry, it's difficult to overstate how dangerous uh, and worrying this kind of um, malware is. Well, it's interesting to give it some perspective. Like when I first heard about, especially the price, um, it made me think of uh, a school district that I helped when I was uh, still an SE here at F5. And this school district, uh, 
a, a kid had stolen mom and dad's credit card and paid a for a botnet so they could avoid a test. That botnet was five thousand hmm. right. dollars. Now for five thousand dollars, they could own the school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> own the whole thing. <laughs> And now, so, if he was renting that botnet, it would probably be twenty five dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? it's, prices yeah. have crashed, and this stuff has become completely commoditized. And yeah, David's right. This hasn't been seen in the wild, as far as I know, and it makes very bold claims. So it could be, you know, a whole lot of vaporware, right? I mean, who's who are you going to complain to? This isn't like saying I bought Adobe Creative Cloud and you didn't give me anything. This is like, I bought this highly dubious tool off some guy on the dark web and you didn't give me anything. Well, what are you going to do? But, so so it's either the scariest boot kit ever or it is like the most the most clever shipping scammer ever. Yeah, yeah. Or it's, or it's a brilliant scam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because for some of these actors, you know, depending on their reputation, some of them do care about their reputation and their reviews. So they will make sure that whatever they're selling is high quality. So um, I, I, I don't remember from the article if they did mention whether this was a reputable known actor that was selling it or if it was, you know, some fly-by-night, you know, uh, seller. Last I saw it was somewhat questionable, uh, but still a little scary to, you know, to ignore. Yes. No, it's, it's a, that's a good point. You know, that's, we think of these tools and, 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 you know, botnets or credentials or whatever you're buying on the dark web as being, ooh, I'm, I'm giving my money to, you know, some shady guy down an alleyway. But yeah, these are run like businesses. They, their reputation is their livelihood, I suppose, because they want repeat trade. This isn't, you know, some guy down a dark alleyway. This is essentially a business that you're buying from and they're run like businesses.